Welcome to the training for improving parent involvement through the use of social media. My name is Christy butender Balaud, and this is my action research project. I want to take a moment and just thank you for agreeing to participate in this project. Uh, without you, this would go nowhere. Um, I greatly think this will benefit, though, not only our school, but other schools and how they approach parent involvement. I think a lot of schools look at a more traditional approach and what I looked at for my action research project was Joyce Epstein's work um, where she looks a little bit more outside of the box on home to school communication. And so when I talk about social media, what we're looking at in this case, and I have a sheet for you that will be in your mailbox if you haven't already received it, is different types of communication. Traditional communication, where we talk about, you know, using, calling home, notes home, emails, and then social media that will help us for, for things like texting, all call, blogs, Facebook, Twitter. So we're trying to see, we're gonna have two different groups. One group is going to look at traditional methods such as notes home, phone calls, and emails. The other group is going to use the traditional methods as well as the social methods. For example, texting, Facebook, Twitter, blogs, to see which influences or improves parent involvement. Um, my hope is to see that the social aspect will have, uh, because it is easier for parents to get in a timely fashion, that that will influence their participation in their child's schooling. And what I found out through research, um, particularly through um, a study by Henderson and Burwell in 1994, they reviewed 85 case studies and documented the comprehensive benefits of parent involvement in their children's education. So this study showed that um, parent involvement activities that are effectively planned and well implemented result in substantial benefits to children, parents, educators, and schools. So you see it affects everybody, every aspect of a child's, um, those players in a child's education. Some of the benefits for children, which I'm sure you're aware of, are they achieve more regardless of um, their racial background, socioeconomic status, or their, ch their parents' education level. They achieve better grades, test scores, and attendance. They consistently complete their homework. They have better self-esteem, are more self-disciplined, and show higher aspirations and motivation towards school. For parents, the benefits in increase for them too as well, with their interaction and discussions with their children, are more responsive and sensitive their children's social, emotional, and intellectual development. Parents are more confident in their parent and decision making. As parents gain more knowledge of child development, there is more use of affection and positive reinforcement and less punishment on their children. Parents have a better understanding of a teacher's job and the school curriculum. And then if we look at some of the benefits for schools, um, schools have a higher percentage of involved parents in and out of school. Um, this affects teachers' morale as well as principals. Teachers and principals often earn greater respect for their profession from parents. Consistent parent involvement leads to improved communication and relationships between parents, teachers, and administrators. Teachers and principals acquire a better understanding of a family's culture and diversity, and they form a deeper respect for parents' abilities and time. Teachers and principals report an increase in job satisfaction. And who can't use that? Benefits for the school is the school has more active parents and the community tends to establish better relationships in the community. Schools also experience better community support. School programs that encourage and involve parents usually do better and have higher quality programs than programs that do not have parent involvement. So once again, the goal of the study is to determine if social media improves parent involvement. Um, I have an outline for you that will also be in your mailbox besides the two-way data communication log 
and I know it will be hard for you to see here, but I, I'm hoping as you read or you go through this training, you can refer to this as well as the outline. What I found is that in order for us to be successful, we need to make sure that data is being collected in a consistent manner. This document that I've outlined um, the procedure that we need to follow for um, the study to be a success. If you have any questions at any time, please feel free to contact me and I'll clear them, clarify them for you. Um, first, what I need us to do is we're only going to be collecting data on single parent African American families that meet the income requirement as outlined in the parent flyer, which I also have attached. So if you have any questions about that, please reference that flyer. Really parents, when they're signing the consent form, will have acknowledged that they meet that um, income requirement. So the second thing I need you to do is we are only going to be collecting data from families that sign the consent form and meet the minimum requirements. Please make sure they're signed and dated and then turn them to me, turn them into me. Um, I'll make sure to have a data collection sheet for each family taking part in the study as well as extras in case you need them. Please fill in the student's name, date, and the week of the intervention, and then your name will go in the classroom section. You will either put a mark in the teacher-initiated section or the parent-initiated section. So who started the communication? Was it you um, sending a note home and the parent replied, or was it a parent giving you a text or an email? We are only going to count communication as two-way communication. That would be an example of a parent um, either contacting you first via email, phone, and then you responding to that phone call or email, or vice versa, where um, you reach out to a parent, say, through a text message, a Facebook mes message, and then they respond back. So it has to be two-way. It has to be going either from school to home or home to school for it to count. And then you will just take the sheet right here it's broken down by each day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can see, and then the method of communication on this side, phone, text, all call, blog, Facebook, Twitter, note home, or email. Then what I need you to do is tell me, what was it for? Was it for behavior? If it was for behavior, you would put a B where it says phone, if that's the method you used, or B for text messaging. Um, we have one for attendance, one for informational, one for learning progress, and one for social emotional. Then at the end of the week, what you're going to need to do is tally them up okay. in each column, and I will come and collect them from you at the end of the week. Okay. Just trying to make sure I've covered everything with you. If you have any other questions about uh, how the data is going to be collected, please don't hesitate to come by and talk to me or shoot me an email and I'll get right back with you on that. Once again, I really appreciate your time and I think this um, information that's going to be collected is going to be beneficial to improving peer involvement. So thank you for participating. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate your time because I know it's so valuable and all the requirements that are being asked of teachers more and more. Um, I don't want this to be just um, another thing that you have to do. Um, I think it is something that will greatly improve our, our relationships with our families here in the community. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it.